The basic single view app template gives you the following. First, appdelegate.swift. This is responsible for monitoring external app events, such as if another app tries to send you a file to open. Second, scenedelegate.swift. This is responsible for managing the way your app is shown, such as letting multiple instances run at the same time, or taking action when one moves to the background. Third, contentview.swift. This is our initial piece of user interface. If this were a UIKit project, this would be the view controller class that Xcode gave us. Fourth, assets.exe assets. This is a regular asset catalog, which stores all the images and colors used in our project. Fifth, launch screen.storyboard. This is the screen that gets shown when your app is loading. Sixth, info.plist, a property list file, which in this instance is used to store system-wide settings for our app. What names we've shown below its icon on the iOS home screen, for example. And seventh, a group called preview content, which contains another asset catalog called preview assets. And that's it. It's a pleasingly small amount of code and resources, which means we can build on it. The part we really care about, in fact, here it's the only part that matters, is contentview.swift. This is the main piece of functionality for our app, and it's where we can start trying out various Swift UI code in just a moment. First though, what makes contentview.swift get shown on the screen? Well, if you remember, I said that scenedelegate.swift is responsible for managing the way your app is shown. Go ahead and open it now, and you'll see code like this in here. Here's a window being created, but then it sets the Windows root view controller to be a UI hosting controller with the root view being a new content view. So this code creates a new content view instance, that's the main piece of functionality we'll be looking at soon, and places it inside a window so it's visible on screen. It's effectively bootstrapping our app by showing the first instance of content view, and from there, it's over to us. What do you want to do? Now open contentview.swift, and let's look at the actual Swift UI code. You'll see this. That's not a lot of code, but it does pack in a great deal of information. First, notice how content view is a struct. Developers familiar with UIKit will know this is huge. We get to benefit from all the immutability and simplicity of value types for our user interface. Folks who aren't familiar with UIKit, well, just nod and smile. You never know the pain we used to have. Second, notice that the content view conforms to the view protocol. Everything you want to show in Swift UI needs to conform to view, and really that means only one thing. You need to have a property that returns some sort of view. Third, the return type of body is some view. The sum keyword is new in Swift 5.1 and is part of a feature called opaque return types. And in this case, what it means is literally, this returns some sort of view, but Swift UI doesn't need to know or care what. Now, as is important, returning some view means that the body property will return something that conforms to the view protocol. You can't return many things or forget to return anything at all. The Swift compiler will refuse to build your code. To be clear, your view body must always return exactly one child view. Fourth, inside the body property, there is text hello world, which creates a label of the text hello world. Finally, below content view is a similar but different struct called content view previews. This does not conform to the view protocol because it's specifically there to show view previews inside Xcode as opposed to be on screen in a real app. This is why you'll see it inside hash if debug and hash end if lines. This code is only built into the finished product when our app runs in a debug environment because it doesn't make sense in a production app. We'll look at each of these components in much more detail soon enough, but first, let's take a look at that text component.